Let's delve into the nebula hypothesis, a compelling explanation for the formation of our solar system first proposed by Pierre-Simon Laplace in the late 18th century. Our solar system is a vast and diverse place filled with planets, moons, asteroids and comets, all orbiting our sun in a delicate cosmic dance. But have you ever wondered how it all began? How did this intricate system of celestial objects form from what was likely a vast, diffuse cloud of gas and dust? According to Laplace's nebula hypothesis, the solar system originated from a massive rotating cloud of interstellar gas and dust called the Solar Nebula. Over time, this nebula began to collapse under its own gravity, spinning faster and faster as it contracted. The hypothesis suggests that the Sun formed at the center of this collapsing nebula where most of the mass concentrated, while the remaining material flattened into a spinning disk around the young Sun. This disk, known as a protoplanetary disk, provided the raw materials from which the planets, moons and other objects in our solar system eventually formed. Understanding the nebula hypothesis is crucial because it provides a framework for comprehending the processes that led to the creation of our own solar system and helps us understand the formation of other planetary systems throughout the universe. It explains the observed properties of our solar system such as the common plane of planetary orbits and the difference in composition between inner rocky planets and outer gas giants. By studying the nebula hypothesis we gain a deeper appreciation for the intricate processes that shaped our cosmic neighborhood. The nebula hypothesis is more than just a historical idea. It's a powerful tool that continues to shape our understanding of planetary system formation. By combining theoretical models with observations of young star systems, we can test and refine our understanding of the processes at play during the early stages of solar system evolution. The nebula hypothesis provides a foundation for our exploration of the cosmos, and its principles are applicable not only to our own solar system, but also to the countless other planetary systems that we now know exist throughout the universe. The story of our solar system begins with a vast cloud of interstellar gas and dust, the solar nebula. This nebula was not unique. Such clouds are common throughout the universe, remnants of previous generations of stars. The solar nebula was composed primarily of hydrogen and helium, the most abundant elements in the cosmos, along with trace amounts of heavier elements like carbon, oxygen and silicon. These heavier elements were forged in the hearts of stars that lived and died long before our sun was born. The solar nebula existed in a state of delicate balance. The inward pull of gravity trying to collapse the cloud was countered by the outward pressure from the random motions of the gas molecules. This balance could have persisted indefinitely, but events in the surrounding interstellar environment likely triggered the nebula's collapse. A nearby supernova explosion, for example, could have sent shockwaves through the nebula, compressing it and upsetting the delicate equilibrium. Once the collapse began, gravity took over. As the nebula contracted, it also began to spin faster, much like a figure skater pulling in their arms. This increase in spin rate is a consequence of the conservation of angular momentum, a fundamental principle in physics. The spinning nebula flattened into a disk shape, with the densest region at the center and a thinner, more diffuse disk extending outward. The central region of this, uh, this collapsing cloud was destined to become our sun, while the surrounding disk held the seeds of the planets to come. As the solar nebula collapsed, its density increased, and the temperature at its core began to rise. The gravitational potential energy of the collapsing cloud was transformed into heat, much like a falling object converts its potential energy into kinetic energy. The core of the nebula became a hot, dense region where hydrogen atoms began to fuse together, releasing immense amounts of energy. This fusion process marked the birth of our sun, a star that has illuminated our corner of the cosmos for billions of years. The sun's formation had a profound impact on the surrounding protoplanetary disk. The intense radiation from the young sun heated the inner regions of the disk, driving away most of the lighter elements like hydrogen and helium. This is why the inner planets Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars are relatively small and rocky. They formed from the heavier elements that could withstand the intense heat and radiation near the young sun. Further out in the disk, beyond the frost line, temperatures were low enough for volatile compounds like water ice, methane and ammonia to condense into solid particles. 
These ices, along with rocky material, provided the building blocks for the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These planets accumulated vast amounts of gas from the disk, becoming the behemoths we see today. The nebula hypothesis elegantly explains the observed differences in composition between the inner rocky planets and the outer gas giants, a key piece of evidence supporting this model. The protoplanetary disk, a swirling maelstrom of gas and dust, was a dynamic environment where the seeds of planets were sown. Within this disk, tiny particles of dust, remnants from the original solar nebula, began to collide and stick together. This process, called accretion, is analogous to how snowflakes form in a cloud where tiny ice crystals collide and coalesce into larger flakes. As these dust grains grew larger, their gravitational pull increased, attracting more particles and accelerating their growth. Over time, these aggregates of dust and ice formed larger objects called planetesimals, the building blocks of planets. The protoplanetary disk was a chaotic place, with planetesimals of all sizes colliding, merging and sometimes shattering into pieces. The growth of planetesimals was not uniform throughout the disk. In the inner disk, where temperatures were higher, only rocky planetesimals could survive. These rocky bodies eventually grew into the terrestrial planets we know today. In the outer disk, beyond the frost line, icy planetesimals were abundant, providing the raw materials for the gas giants. These icy bodies could grow much larger than their rocky counterparts, as ice was far more abundant in the outer disk. Accretion, the process of particles sticking together to form larger objects, played a crucial role in the formation of planets. As planetesimals moved through the protoplanetary disk, they swept up smaller particles, gradually increasing their size and mass. This process accelerated as planetesimals grew larger, their gravitational pull attracting more material. However, the collisions between planetesimals were not always constructive. Sometimes, Impacts would shatter these objects into smaller pieces, temporarily halting their growth. But the overall trend was towards larger and larger objects, as the gravitational pull of the growing planetesimals dominated the dynamics of the disk. The size distribution of planetesimals in the disk played a crucial role in the types of planets that formed. In the inner disk, where rocky planetesimals dominated, the planets that formed were relatively small and dense, like Earth and Mars. In the outer disk, where icy planetesimals were abundant, the planets grew much larger, accumulating vast amounts of gas from the surrounding disk. These gas giants, like Jupiter and Saturn, represent a different outcome of the accretion process, driven by the abundance of icy material. As planetesimals continued to grow through accretion, they eventually reached a critical size where their gravitational pull became dominant in their region of the protoplanetary disk. These protoplanets, the precursors to fully formed planets, began to clear out their orbital paths, sweeping up remaining planetesimals and gas. The process of planetary formation was not a peaceful one. Collisions between protoplanets were common, sometimes resulting in mergers that created even larger planets. Other times, impacts would eject planets from the system entirely, leaving behind a trail of debris. The early solar system was a chaotic and violent place, a far cry from the relatively stable system we see today. The final stages of planetary formation involved the cooling and differentiation of these newly formed worlds. As protoplanets cooled, Heavier elements sank towards their centers, while lighter elements rose to the surface. This process, called differentiation, led to the layered structure of planets like Earth, with a dense iron core, a molten mantle, and a thin crust. The nebula hypothesis provides a framework for understanding not only the formation of planets, but also their internal structure and evolution. The nebula hypothesis elegantly explains the striking difference in composition between the inner rocky planets and the outer gas giants. This difference stems from the temperature gradient in the protoplanetary disk, with hotter temperatures near the young sun and colder temperatures further out. In the inner disk, where temperatures were high, only rocky materials could condense out of the gas. These materials formed the building blocks for the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. These planets are relatively small and dense, composed primarily of rock and metal. Beyond the frost line, where temperatures were low enough for volatile compounds like water ice, methane, and ammonia to freeze, icy planetesimals were abundant. 
These icy bodies could grow much larger than their rocky counterparts, as ice was far more abundant in the outer disk. These massive icy cores provided the gravitational pull needed to capture vast amounts of hydrogen and helium gas from the surrounding disk, leading to the formation of the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. The nebula hypothesis first proposed centuries ago has stood the test of time and continues to guide our understanding of planetary system formation. Modern astronomical observations have provided compelling evidence supporting this hypothesis, revealing the processes at play in young star systems where planets are currently forming. Telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope and the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array AILMA have captured stunning images of protoplanetary disks around young stars. These observations reveal the structure and evolution of these disks, providing valuable insights into the processes that lead to planet formation. Furthermore, the discovery of thousands of exoplanets, planets orbiting other stars, has provided a wealth of data to test and refine our models of planetary system formation. The diversity of exoplanetary systems, with planets of different sizes, compositions, and orbital configurations has challenged our understanding of the planet formation process leading to new insights and modifications to the nebula hypothesis. Laplace's nebula hypothesis conceived over two centuries ago remains a cornerstone of our understanding of the solar system's origins. This elegant idea refined and enriched by modern astronomical observations provides a framework for comprehending the intricate processes that shaped our cosmic neighborhood. The nebula hypothesis explains not only the formation of our own solar system but also the diversity of planetary systems observed throughout the universe. It highlights the key role of gravity, accretion and the temperature gradient in the protoplanetary disk in shaping the planets we see today.